It's a very important piece for us to help educate our clients, our prospective clients, and actually anyone out there about how their lives are going to change during the, during the next five years. Here is the first one. Deep learning could create more economic value than the internet did. So I want to illustrate a few things here. Uh, The reason deep learning has happened is because uh, we've taken the human programmer out of the equation. We've got uh, data training machines and uh, we've got big data, uh, iterative algorithms, supercomputing power. And uh, the the power has reached a point uh, where now the machines are training themselves. Human beings cannot possibly conceive of all the possible permutations out there when they're saying, when they're trying to program, let's say, an autonomous vehicle. It's not possible. But machines can train themselves. And deep learning is is the way to do that. What's interesting about deep learning is training costs, like for autonomous vehicles or autonomous taxi networks, or for Alexa, or for TikTok, uh, those training costs are dropping 37% per year. And the models, the artificial intelligent models built around deep learning are growing Uh, tenfold per year. So the computing power that we're going to need in the years ahead is enormous. So we think that the market will will scale to $30 trillion in opportunity in the AI space from $2 trillion now. That works out to a 17% CAGR or compound annual rate of return. You look at the green uh, part of the bars, that's that's the internet. And you can see it, it will go, it will increase from $13 trillion to 20 trillion, but AI is going to be uh, taking over in terms of growth trajectories. In fact, uh, by the time 2037, the internet will be very mature and the growth rate from 13 trillion to 20 trillion over that 17 year period actually equates to only 3%. So the, the real growth is in deep learning and it is the next big wave. Server processors will transform the next decade. Okay, Intel has dominated, Intel's x86 has dominated the data center. The servers in data centers, 92% of them have an Intel x86 processor. That is going to change dramatically. By the year 2030, we believe Intel's share of the data center will drop to 27%, 92% to 27%. Uh, Intel has really lost its way. And uh, we do believe that ARM and RISC-V are going to displace uh, Intel. Uh, They together will grow at a 45% annualized rate over, over the next 10 years. Virtual worlds, uh, you know, we've this has been a long time evolving. Uh, you remember the Google glasses, uh, premature. The technology was not ready and the costs were not low enough. Uh, and believe it or not, that is still the case. But we are beginning to see breakthroughs now that could could really impact the gaming market first. So you can see here the gaming market, and and this is the gaming market as you and I know it, which includes both premium the premium sixty dollar games plus in game purchases. You can see that we expect a sixteen percent compound annual rate of growth during the next five years. Now you'll see that's coming uh, much more from in-game purchases. So that world continues to transform. What's been really interesting about following the gaming sector over the last 25 years is that every time a new technology has evolved, the gaming sector has seen incremental growth. That is unlike video and music. With each new technology, they got hit 
Uh, gaming is the only area we've seen that has been able to migrate from one technology to another and the space gets bigger. We believe this is about to happen once again with artificial reality. I mean, uh, yes, artificial reality and virtual reality. So we are um, looking at a 59% uh, compound annual rate of growth. We do think the technology is almost there. Uh, we know that Facebook with Oculus has been seeing some good success. It's been sold out of its uh, latest model. We believe COVID-19 uh, helped to accelerate that as it accelerated so much in innovation. And so pay attention to this space. It could be very exciting. Digital wallets, uh, these are the new bank branches in our pockets or in our handbags. Uh, and we believe they're going to scale. They're in the process of scaling now. Here in the United States, it's Cash App and Venmo primarily. Of course, we, uh, we've we seen WeChat, WeChat Pay and Alipay scale in China. Uh, so we were a little more developed and had good financial rails, uh, which China did not. So they led the charge into this space. Again, the coronavirus uh, turbo has turbocharged it. Uh, the reason uh, this is happening is not just because we're dealing with contactless payments. So, you know, we don't have to worry about the virus with uh, digital wallets, uh, whereas we do with credit cards and debit cards. I think they, they actually uh, spread are more virulent in terms of sp spreading the virus uh, than cash itself. So digital wallets have gotten a, a booster here and uh, their cost of customer acquisition is a fraction of that of traditional uh, banks. Uh, $20 versus anywhere from $150 to uh, $1,500. And the reason banks were willing to pay so much is their customers were so loyal. Well, we think that's about to change and that banks are in trouble. Uh, and we think that the valuation uh, of these digital wallets is going to scale uh, enormously during the next uh, five to 10 years. So today you can see here on this chart, uh, Venmo and Cash App are valued in the marketplace at roughly, um, at roughly, well, between 250 and $700 per user. And we see that that we believe if they capture the share of banking business, brokerage business, insurance, we see that they could scale to nearly $20,000 per customer. Uh, now, what we've included in this big idea is that we did not last year was 10,000 of that roughly will come from e-commerce. If you study WeChat Pay, you'll see that half of the time spent on WeChat Pay is in payments and then half in e-commerce. So again, another big opportunity that we really hadn't taken into enough account uh, last year when we did big ideas.